Duplantis next to go. See that and I'm sure once we get this men's 3,000 underway. Conversation there between uh, Inga Britson and Stewie McSwain. We've raced each other quite a few times this year. McSwain chose to try and chase Inga Britson through to a medal he'd hoped to. Of course, Inga Britson went on to run a stunning race in the 1500 and take the gold medal, McSwain. I think some people are thinking he might have had to go at the 5,000 meters. Well, we've got the coming together here of uh, Olympic medalists all over the place here. Berege, you've just seen, we'll talk about him in a second, but Ahmed, what an Olympic Games he had. A little bit disappointing in the 10,000, and then a silver medal. Canada's first in the 5,000 meters. Crop, uh, Philip Inga Britson, Wale, did things didn't turn out well for the steeplechaser, the Ethiopian steeplechaser in the way he would have liked. Grant Fisher, who also doubled up, the American who really did impress in Tokyo with his performances. But we'll all be watching this man, Jakob Inga Britson, men's 3,000 meters. So pace that's been asked for is a nice even, I say even, 60 seconds per lap, heading for 2K at that pace, and then let's see what happens after that. Will they uh, bring it well under 7.30? Well, who knows, it's certainly capable of it, but this wind, sorry to go on about it, but just uh, if you do sit at home and you're wondering why aren't they running quicker, that may be why. So Eric Sawinski, the American, and uh, Vincent Capet have the pacemaking duties, and they quietly make their way to the front. And McSwain, as ever, will want this to be hard and quick for as long as possible. Always gives him the best chance as uh, Inga Britson and Kipsang himself. A uh, great 1500 meter pace. It will be interesting to see how he goes here. So, decent start in terms of pace, Tim, but uh, the others just starting to take a little while to get on the back of the Australian who's in the yellow. Yeah, I was going to say, Steve, one, uh, one thing I'm fairly certain of is that if Eric Swinsky doesn't hit the splits here, that Stuart McSwain in the yellow will take it up and run hard from the front. I had a chat with him this morning. He said, yep, yeah, I'm feeling great. I've been sleeping well since I came over from uh, Eugene at the weekend. My legs are still feeling good. I'm planning to go to Zurich where I'm qualified for the 5,000 and the 1,500 at the uh, the uh, Diamond League final, I've got to decide whether to do both or not, but he said, I'm really up for this and enjoying myself. And actually, Steve, talking about Ingebrigtsen at the press conference yesterday, I said to him, you know, you're hold the European record of 1,500 and 5,000, 3,000, you're probably, probably your best distance, isn't it? He just went, yes. I know. Very I, firmly. He's, he's not the first athlete who you could say that. And it's an intriguing race. You, you bring together Berega, the Olympic 10,000 meter champion, the Olympic 1,500 meter champion in Ingebrigtsen, the silver medalist, in the 5,000, Mohamed, and then, but you'd still look at McSwain and say, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if he was in the top three here tonight. So he had a little look, look, look behind there and is wondering where the others are. They're being just blocked up by Inga Britson, who's not quite sure whether he wants to just tag on to the back of the Australian, but by not doing it, he's effectively leading that bunch, particularly in the windy back straight. So two pacemakers have been spot on, following the lights, as you can see on the inside of the track, 62nd pace, absolutely right. And now Inga Britson just easing himself up the Australian, which I think is wise. Well, I was just going to say, there's one thing you can say about Jakob Inga Britson. He gets his tactics right again and again, race after race. He recognised the danger, and solo, he's crossed that gap and is now more or less back in touch with that leading trail and on the shoulder of Stewie McSwain. And he's got to respect McSwain. You know, McSwain's a sub-730, 3,000 guy, a 348 miler. He's a fabulously quick 5,000 metre runner. So now the race is on, and this is pretty much what we expected. McSwain against Ingebrigtsen. If anybody else can get involved, they have now got to cross that gap because there's about eight metres between the pack and that leading four. Great pace making over the first, well, He's effectively done three laps, Sawinski. He only had to go to a 1,000, but he's uh, done a little bit extra there. And left Quebec out in front, just protected him from the wind down that back straight. So McSwain and Inga Britson have got a good 15-metre lead to the chasing pack. And that pack obviously includes Ahmed, it includes Barrega, Edris is there as well, Balu towards the uh, back of that pack, just trying to get a little bit closer up. Indeed, uh, Ahmed uh, a little bit further back. I'm seeing he's in that pack. He's having to work something. You can just see him in the white and the red shorts following the American Grant Fisher. But these three, that lead is increasing. They're not catching them up at all. These three just 
with the pacemaker, the two main men there, just increasing this to a good 20 metres, maybe more now. Well, I'm really surprised, Steve, that Barrega let that gap develop. Why didn't he go with Ingebrigtsen? He had a, almost the perfect pacemaker to cross the gap, but now that's 20 metres, and Barrega and uh, the other big names in that group, Edris, Trice World Champion at 5,000 metres, have let the race go, and it's going to be a very, very tough second half for them if they're to get back to those two big names behind Quebec. Well, I don't think that's going to be something they can do because it, you, if you think with somebody who's going with a pace who can't hold it, then yes, maybe, but not these two. They're well capable of keeping it going. And it's McSwain who will be at the front, and he's been watching the screen as they head down the back straight. Another 60-second lap. Really good pacemaking for these two guys, setting them up for something under 7.30. Now, how much can Quebec keep going? The danger is Quebec's slowing here. McSwain is next stepping out. McSwain needs to recognize that and not give the chasing pack even a sniff of getting back to them. As they head down the back straight, they'll have a 1,000 meters left, two and a half laps. Inga Britson getting protection from the Australian. Will he help him? I doubt it. Well, you know what, Steve? He won't help him, but Stuart McSwain is used to this. It's a familiar scenario from him. He's run fields over the last couple of years into the ground from the front. It'll be quite hard to push this on. The gap probably 20 metres, maybe closing a little bit back to the pack. And you're right, uh, Ingebrigtsen won't help him at all, but Stuart McSwain will be happy with this situation. He likes to be in control. He likes to call the shots. And as, if anything, actually, that gap has just over the last couple of hundred has opened a couple more metres. So they come through and another, what, 62 second lap. It's slowed a bit, but there hasn't been much impression from the pack. Yeah, the, the two at the front, Ingebrigtsen's just sitting and waiting. And while he does that, Aragawi chasing hard, Edris and Borrega trying to work towards him as well. But they're not actually able to go with Aragawi, which is a surprise. Uh, Borrega finally getting moving, goes past Edris, but McSwain and Inga Britson are checking behind, 600 metres to go. Inga Britson looks incredibly comfortable, but that gap is closing. Aragar, we're doing his best to get up there, but he's having to work so hard, and even if he gets close at the bell, you just feel these two will then move away on the last lap. So McSwain leading, just starting to look a little tired. Inga Britson sitting where he is happy to be. Another little glance behind, sees Aragawi has closed it to about eight, nine metres, but they're approaching the bell. The only thing I think, Steve, is Aragari's having to work so hard to get to them. As they come to the bell in, what, 6.35, it has slowed. The first K, 2.29. The second K was about uh, 2.32. And Aragari is having to work so hard to get back up to them. Surely he won't be able to keep that acceleration going. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he goes straight past them or sits in behind because Inga Britson is still waiting and Aragawi does go past and Inga Britson surely will just step out and follow McSwain trying to check who else is there. Nobody is the answer. He's going to be left in third. So the chase on at the front. Aragawi, he's done a great job of trying to chase them down. He's done that. The Olympic finalists at 10,000 metres taking on the Olympic champion at 1500 meters surely there's only one result here a brave effort from Aragawi and Inga Britson's having to work very hard Aragawi looks at him as if to say is that all you've got <laughs> and he's got just enough Inga Britson steals the win in the end only hit the front of the race in the last 30 meters but it was enough looked a little tired I think Inga Britson there I'm sure if he'd felt better would have gone earlier and not let Aragawi catch them, but hats off to Aragawi. What a brave run from the youngster. Showed a lot of strength and a lot of commitment to get back to those two. Wasn't scared to go past them. And it was an interesting little look, wasn't it? Because I think he thought Inga Britton's going to fly by me. He didn't quite manage that, but he did get the win. Well, Aragawi ran fantastically strongly, didn't he? His second half must be astonishing, his splits. Steve, I think one thing we've got to remember is that the wind has picked up. I'm looking over at the flags now at the near the start of the 1500 metres. They're blowing pretty stiffly. I think down the back straight in each lap, they were running into a really strong wind. So 7.33 by Ingebrigtsen and Aragawi. Stuart McSwain, a battling third in 7.35.06. I think those are great times in these conditions. Yeah, maybe Aragawi, I mean, yet another great Ethiopian, you know, and he, he wasn't one of the better-known athletes to get the nod to go and run in the 10,000 metres. They had such a strong 10,000 metre trial, and they left others uh, out of it, and 
Of course, Perega went on to win the title, but Aragawi, just 20 years of age, showing no fear at this point. And you would have expected Inga Britson just to put the burners on. But Aragawi had run so hard as you made the point to get there. You're expecting a maybe and he'd just have to wave goodbye to Inga Britson. But look at this, when he came onto his shoulder, he really had to pick up and keep working hard. And Aragawi almost held him off, not quite. So the Norwegian, the Olympic champion at 1500, wins the 3000 here tonight. But a lot of tired athletes, I think, Tim, in that race. And McSwain just hanging on for third spot. It's frustrating, isn't it? Because we won't know how much quicker they could have run in better condition. It, it's it's not a warm evening, and it's certainly a very breezy evening. But that is a great racing, Steve, and we shouldn't get so caught up. I suppose it's so tempting as fans of the sport, as uh, commentators who enjoy these great Middle Eastern races, to talk about times. Or